holding on when the wind and the waves come. And I pray this morning as Johnny speaks that, Lord God, you'd fill him with your Holy Spirit, that he would speak what is on your heart. Father, I know that you have a table prepared for us. And I pray that you would give us hearts and minds to receive, to understand, and to apply it to our lives, that we would be more like you, Lord Jesus. Bless him now. Give him boldness and courage, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. phrase it sounds like uh, if you like uh, watch lots of movies uh, you might believe it's the kind of phrase that is all about um, affirmation and just you know digging deep and looking inside yourself you watch uh, movies where people uh, to inspire a hero just say I just believe in you uh, it's all about just digging deep and looking inside yourself and finding that extra uh, extra bit of strength um, if you uh, look at the source of all information in this world the Oracle of Google, and you type in the phrase believing in people, uh, you'll get all sorts of interesting results. Um, but uh, it sounds like a kind of thing that's like a, a self-help kind of statement, isn't it? It's uh, the kind of thing where uh, people go, is this something that's worth doing? Is it like that inspirational moment in a movie uh, or not? What is it that Jesus believing in people looks like? That's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, well, the example that we're going to be using is the example of him calling a group of disciples. Um, the disciples were the closest people to Jesus. Um, and Matthew 4, verse 19, is the first time that Jesus speaks to Peter. This is what he says to him. He says, come and follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So we're going to follow the example of Jesus' relationship with his disciples to see what does believing in people look like uh, for Jesus. And um, when you do a route around on Google and uh, look at all these kind of things, you say, what, what do other people think believing in people might look like? Or why do we do it? One of the things that came up um, was I found out about this book. Put your hands up if you've ever heard of this book. It's called How to Win Friends and Influence People. A few people. So by, well, by digging into it, I found out a few interesting things about this book. Um, uh, yeah, you're not all... Um, super young people, and a lot of you have heard of it, and there's a reason for that. <laughs> this, this book is nearly 90 years old. This book was written in 1937. And since then, 30 million copies have been sold, and it is still a bestseller today. People are still buying it. Um, and I found that was pretty interesting. And when I, I, you know, I've never read it myself. I looked at some articles, found out, what, why did people read it? What's so interesting about this book? Um, and it's full of some really useful and helpful information. But the reason that it's written is from a viewpoint of the world that basically says, life is hard, but wouldn't it just be that much easier if my relationships with people could work for me a little bit better? How can I win friends and influence people to get ahead in my career or to avoid conflict? These are all not bad things in themselves, but they portray a view of the world that says, um, the reason for relationships is to help me. How can I help people? So this book says, well, maybe you should believe in people if they're worth it. Maybe you should believe in people if that's useful for you. By believing in people, you might you know, uh, help smooth out relationships uh, and make things work better. Uh, but the whole point of the way the world says relationships are based on you know, give and take. Why should we believe in people unless there's something in it for me? Um, and Jesus' relationship with his disciples is not like that. <laughs> so Jesus was someone uh, who believed in people deeply. So we're going to talk about um, why should we do it? The whole point of the masterclasses was saying these are things that Jesus did and we should do too. So why should we do it? The first point is he did it. This is what Jesus did. He believed in people. 
Um, And what that looked like for him was exactly what we just read in Matthew chapter 9. He walked up to people and he spoke to them who were fishing at the side of of the lake and he said, come with me and you're going to be fishers of men. That Jesus believed in people by taking them from where they were um, and bringing them into a different future, a future where they were walking with him and where he was walking alongside them. Jesus poured his life and his energy, his time, his prayers into these 12 disciples. He chose these people not because of who they were, because they weren't the influential or uh, um, powerful people in this time. You know, choosing disciples was something that wasn't uncommon in Jesus' day. But doing it like this was not the way that he did it. The Pharisees would have had disciples. But, you know, they'd have had job interviews. They'd have said, why should, I, why should you be my disciple? Why should I invest my time in you? And the disciple would be the one who has to prove to the teacher, I want to listen to you and I want to follow you. And here's why you should invest in me and believe in me. Jesus walked up to people and said, I'm going to believe in you. I'm going to pour my life into you. So this is what he did. He built a fellowship and a relationship where 12 people, in particular, there are many people came and followed Jesus, but there were 12 people that Jesus called to himself. And he said, I'm going to pour into you all my time and my love. I'm going to reveal God's heart. I'm going to show you what it is to follow Jesus. Uh, sorry, Jesus is showing you. I'm going to show you what it is to follow God. And by building those relationships, he was setting an example. He was setting an example for those disciples, um, as we're going to see why as it goes on. And so this is what he did. He believed in people, and he pulled them to himself, and he spent all his time and energy investing that in people. And as we read the story of Jesus' walk with his disciples, what does it look like? At the moment, we've got a picture of Jesus at the center, surrounded by 12 strong followers, um, and he is investing in them and pouring into their lives. And when you get towards the pinnacle of the story, at Gethsemane, Jesus has all 12, or 11 of the 12 of his disciples. All 12 of his disciples end up in the garden with him. And his relationship with them looks very different. What ends up happening is Jesus gets abandoned by his 12 closest friends. When Jesus pours his life and his soul and he believes in people with everything he's got, 11 of them abandon him and one betrays him. What an example. So why does he do it? Why is this what Jesus does? Why does he choose to do this? You know, and this is the thing. Jesus consistently talks about, he knows this is going to happen. He walks into this situation willingly and in full knowledge that this is going to happen. Um, And he does it anyway. So why does he do it? So we believe in people because that's what Jesus did. Um, But Jesus believed in people because he sees that is how God always works in the world. If you look at the beginning of the Bible, which I like to do, uh, you've always got to go back, you know, all the things that you see Jesus doing. He's not making them up out of nowhere. This isn't just groundbreaking stuff that no one's ever heard of before. He is doing what God has been doing since the very beginning. In Genesis chapter 1, we see a story of how God makes a world for people. That's why he does it. That every single step of the creation narrative that you read in Genesis chapter 1, he's talking about building a home. He's talking about building a garden that's going to be a perfect place where God and mankind can live and work together. This is what we read in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds in the sky, and over every living creature that moves on the ground. God is calling humans to doing what he's been doing. He has created a perfect home, and then he's created these people that the verses just before describe as being in his image. Humans are like God. And the thing that he wants them to do is to fill this earth and to bring blessing and to rule over it the way that God has ruled over creation and still rules over all things. He's saying, I'm not the boss and you just sit and watch. He's saying, I want, he's calling them into that same thing. He's calling humans to rule over the world. But what that means is to fill it with love and compassion, to bring goodness and joy and peace out of the world. That's what human beings are capable of. 
That's what Jesus believes human beings are capable of. And that is consistently how God treats humans all the way through the Bible. The entire story of the Old Testament is full of a God who doesn't just ignore people or abandon people or say, I'm going to do it myself. He works with people. He chooses people. And he draws them to himself. And that's how he works in the world. Now, you know, the story of uh, Moses and the Passover and how Israel escapes from oppression in Egypt is a story about a man who isn't fit for the job and doesn't want the job. If you read the story of the burning bush, you know, it's a great story where we teach it to our kids in Sunday school, but it's a story about a guy who just doesn't want to be there. He wants to run away. He doesn't want to be this leader. He doesn't want to be the person who God makes him to be. And this is the thing. God believes in him. He believes in him at that point, and he never changes his mind. He never lets him down. And God believes in Moses every step of the way, and Moses becomes a great leader who leads his people out, just as God had promised and knew this is what would happen. And there are setbacks. Moses is not perfect, and yet, consistently, God is working alongside him. God is committed to working with people. God knows that people at work in the world can fulfill their potential. What we were created to be at the beginning. People who are the image of God. That's the amazing story of what, uh, God, how God works through the Old Testament. That's why I love the Old Testament so much. It's full of these stories that he's the same God and that he's consistently working with people because he loves people and because he wants to invest in people. God believes in people even though they don't deserve it. They don't deserve to be believed in. And that is uh, one of the amazing things about it. So we believe in people because that's what Jesus did, and it's how God works in the world. Not only is it how God has worked in the world, but it is the pattern of the kingdom. Um, We've heard some amazing testimonies already this morning about what it means to believe in Jesus and to follow Jesus. Um, And the reason why Jesus acts this way, why he calls disciples to himself, he pours his life into them, and he believes in them because this is a pattern that God established at the beginning, and he's continuing. And as he builds a new kingdom, he says, this is not going to be like how the kingdoms of the world work. It's going to be an upside-down kingdom. That's the point of the T-shirt. It's not back to front, it's upside down. Yeah. If I look at it, it's actually the right way up, but anyway. Um, So an upside-down kingdom is what Jesus came to establish, a kingdom where he can call people to himself. He is the leader, believes in people who he knows are going to let him down. And he does it anyway because this kingdom is not like the world. It's not like how to win friends and influence people. The reason why he's investing in these people is because by doing this, he's breaking the way that the world says, this is how it always works. The world says... You just look out for yourself. You know, people and relationships are great, but, you know, relationships can be hard and sometimes they're not good for you. And sometimes that is true. But the reason that Jesus believes in people is because he says this is the pattern and this is the way that the world can work. This is the way God created the world to work at the beginning. That he believes in people. He's saying not everyone is a disappointment. That's what Jesus says to his disciples. He says they're not a disappointment to him, even though they abandon him. And the great thing to remember is that's not the end of the story. Jesus' relationship with his disciples is restored. That when they run away from him and abandon him, and he dies alone on a cross, that's not the end of the story either. That he's establishing a kingdom where he can rebuild that relationship. And that even death itself can't separate him from them. And even their betrayal and their abandonment of Jesus can't separate them from the fact that he has called them to this pattern of this kingdom. He's called to them and said, I'm going to believe in you, and I still do. And you can still be those people. And that Simon Peter, who's the guy he speaks to here in John chapter 21, uh, Jesus says to him, Simon, son of John, do you believe in me? Uh, sorry, do you love me? And he answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus says, take care of my sheep. Jesus is reaffirming and reestablishing a pattern that he wants Peter to carry on. That in his relationship with Peter, he described him as a rock on which he was going to build his church. And at the point when Jesus said that, 
Peter was still a flaky fisherman who was going to deny that he even knew who Jesus was. And that is the guy that he said, he's the rock. I'm going to build my church on him. And Jesus sets an example where he says to his disciples, I'm not always going to be here, but the message is going to be here. The Holy Spirit is going to come. And this pattern of the kingdom is going to carry on. And it's going to carry on through you. And the way you're going to do it is by believing in people the way that he did. So we believe in people because it's what Jesus did. It's how God works. It's the pattern of the kingdom. And it's what we're called to do. This is what he wants us to do. So that's why he sets that example. Because he says to these disciples, you're going to go on. And you're going to come alongside people. You're going to believe in them. And they might let you down. And they might abandon you. And yet, by doing that, you're showing them what God is like. You're showing them that God never gives up on them. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether they give up on you. Or whether they abandon you. Or even whether they betray you. He says, we're doing it because we believe in who God is. And what he believes about humans. They're his children. God believes that everyone is his child and he doesn't give up on anyone. That's not what he does. Uh, John chapter 6, verse 36, uh, Jesus says, I am the bread of life and whoever comes to me will never go hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Jesus makes the ultimate sacrifice for his disciples. He, the only person he had believing in him was the Father. And yet, That relationship with the Father is what drove everything he did. He knew God better than anyone else. And that is why he followed this example. He believed in people. He poured into their lives. Um, And even when he's let down, he sets that example of paying an ultimate price. And he says to people, if you believe in me, you'll never go thirsty. And that's the promise, isn't it? That he says, that is the message that he establishes in that pattern of the kingdom and then tells his disciples, this is what you should do. Tell them, believe in me. People believe in me and they'll never go thirsty. So, uh, believing in people is uh, a challenge, isn't it? It's not going to be easy. (laughs) So, uh, a few things for us to be aware of when we think about it. Believing in people is going to be costly. We've heard some testimonies this morning about how hard it is. Um, yeah, thank you for the, the boldness of the people who stand up and share a testimony of how much it costs and how much it hurts to follow Jesus. We should be under no illusions that following Jesus is going to be easy because relationships that make things easy for you is exactly what the world says. That's the opposite of what the kingdom looks like. You know, relationships that make things life easier and more comfortable for you is why you should read How to Win Friends and Influence People. It'll teach you those things. But Jesus says, believe in people, it's going to be costly. It's going to hurt. It's going to be hard. It's risky. I'm an example of that. I'm here speaking to you, not because I've proved my credentials and I don't deserve to be up here speaking to you. Because people believe in me. Um, uh, And so... Uh, the other thing that we should do is remember that by believing in people, it's going to be rewarding. Believing in people will be rewarding. Uh, And the reason for that is not because um, we're always going to see people always, um, you know, return that belief. You know, if we, you know, make ourselves vulnerable and put ourselves out there and say, I want to believe in people and we want to invest our time and our energy in people, we want to love people, we want to invite them into our homes Uh, and all these kind of things, it's not always going to be plain sailing. It's going to be hard. But the reason that it's going to be rewarding is because it reveals God's heart. God believes in people. God, from the very beginning of the Bible, bound himself to people. Humans are what God is all about. We are the ones who are created in his image, and he really does care about us. We really are his children. And he wants to have that relationship with us. That is what he wants to do. And we can show that to people by believing in them. By believing in people, it's going to be costly. It will be rewarding because it reveals what God's heart is like. And it's something that we can do right now. It's not a big, uh, crazy statement. I've been using this phrase a lot, believing in people, believing in people. It's not like an 
inspirational movie. It's not just coming alongside people and giving them a well choreographed speech or whatever, not choreographed, what do I mean, you know, or a little dance routine, yeah, to encourage them. It's not about um, just saying the right words at the right time, even though that's part of it. it. What it is, is an attitude. Believing in people is an attitude. To, it's a choice that we make to act the way that God acts. I missed a trick by not putting my favorite Bible verse into this presentation. Exodus chapter 34 is one of my favorite passages because when Moses is face to face with God and God says, you want to know who I am and what I'm like? I'll tell you. And God speaks his own name and says, I am your God who is gracious and compassionate. I'm slow to anger and I'm rich in love. That is what God's heart is. And believing in people reveals that. That God is full of those things. That's what he's all about. So believing in people is something that we can do uh, right now. And, you know, it doesn't have to be um, a big, uh, grand gesture. It can be something that we do while we're sharing coffee today. It can be something that we do when we just chat to our neighbors over the fence. It could be something that we do at any time. Any time we interact with people, if we choose to have God's heart, then we can open ourselves up and show people this pattern of the kingdom. I am transformed because Jesus believes in me. And he believes in you too. There are no lost causes. There's no one who's beyond his reach. God believes in people. And so by doing that, we can follow in the footsteps of Jesus. We can believe in people. And through that, we'll see lives changed. And the kingdom grow. The upside down kingdom that says we should believe in people. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you. Uh, for Jesus, for sending your son to die uh, to rescue us. Father, we're so grateful for the pattern that he set, for the way that he chose his disciples. He poured his life into them because he believed in them. And Father God, thank you that you believe in us and that we can believe in you. Father God, thank you that you are dependable. You are a solid rock that you build our life upon. And we really pray, Lord, that as we uh, choose to believe in people, Lord, that we would see your kingdom come and we would see hearts transformed by following that example of Jesus and believing in people. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.